Welcome to GTech. Today we are going to see about Geiger Muller counter. Geiger Muller counter is used to measure the intensity of the radioactive radiation. When nuclear radiations pass through gas, ionization is produced. This is the principle of this device. You can see the picture in the right side shows you about the Geiger Muller counter. Now let us see about the construction of Geiger Muller counter. This Geiger Muller tube that is GM tube consists of a metal tube with a glass envelope C acting as a cathode. You can see the picture over here that is having a GM tube that is made up of a metal with glass envelope. So this glass envelope is a cathode and a fine tungsten wire W is taken along the axis of the tube which acts as anode tube is well insulated from the anode wire. So anode is here and uh, this tungsten tube is there. So this tungsten tube is acting with the cathode. So this acts with anode 2 from the anode wire. So here the counter is there and the power supply in the ground is there and the resistance is maintained. Let us further see about the construction. So in the construction part we are going to see about the operation phase. So the ionization of the gas is independent of the type of the incident radiation. Hence. Geiger Muller counter does not distinguish the type of radiation that enters the chamber. You can see in the picture right side. So the ionization of the gas is independent of the type of the incident radiation, right? So uh, here the uh, inner conductor anode is shown. So here a lower density gas is passing and uh, outer, outer conduction cathode is shown and the electron cascade is present over here and the volt is maintained both for a positive energy and the negative energy and you could see the ionization radiation is getting passed purely and no other low density gas is getting passed to it. Now let us see about nuclear fission. Nucleus of a heavier atom get split into two fragments with the release of large amount of energy is called nuclear fission. The fission is accompanied by releasing of neutrons. So the fission reaction with the uranium-235 has been shown over here in the reaction below. So I'm just highlighting it. So it is uranium-235 but one neutron gives you Ba plus Kr plus 3N plus Q and uranium gets reacted with the neutron and gives you Zt plus Sr plus 2 neutron plus Q. So what is chain reaction? In the uncontrolled chain reaction, the number of neutrons multiply indefinitely and the entire amount of energy is released within a fraction of a second. This type of chain reaction takes place in atom bombs. 
you could see that this uranium is getting splitted and again the particle got splitted is getting splitted into the parts of uranium again and this is going to get splitted into uh, some more uranium and this process will go on uncontrollably such process is so called chain reaction and uh, this chain reaction is the major part for atom bombs so atom bombs is based on the principle of uncontrollable fission chain reaction as we told you already so natural uranium consists of 99.28 percent of uranium 238 and 0.72 percent of uranium 235 so uranium 238 is fissionable only by fast neutrons you can see the picture uh, right side shows you the atom bomb so uh, there are fast explosive slow explosive part and the tamper pusher and below you can see the middle part is having the neutron initiator and over here it is plutonium core and um, this one is a spherical shockwave compressed core so an atom bomb consists of two hemispheres of uranium 235 or plutonium 239 each smaller than the critical size and are kept apart by a separate aperture now let us look into nuclear reactor the picture right side shows you uh, the typical nuclear reactor and how it is um, uh, getting connected to a uh, power grid and to the house for the provision of uh, electricity a nuclear reactor is a device in which the nuclear fusion reaction takes place in a self-sustained and controlled manner the first nuclear reactor was built in 1942 at Chicago USA so this nuclear reactor will be having the parts such as condenser control rods reactor vessels turbine generator in the nuclear reactor what is the fuel used so that is so called as fissile material the fissile material or nuclear fuel generally used in uranium-235 but this exists only in a small amount of about 0.7% in natural uranium. The natural uranium is enriched with more number of uranium-235 about 2-4% and this low enriched uranium is used as fuel in small reactor. You can see the detailed part of the nuclear reactor over here in the picture where you can see the control rod, uranium fuel element, reactor core, inside a molten solid sodium liquid water pressure controller carrier and it is then getting passed into the chamber of steam and through the primary loop it, uh, it is getting attached to the secondary part and the secondary part loop is going to the steam turbine and electric generator here in the under part of the stream it through the pump it is getting into the cold water and the warm water zone so here the condenser part gets acted steam from turbine is condensed by cold water over here so from the condenser it's going over here so condensation takes place over here now let us see about moderator a moderator is to slow down fast neutrons produced in the fission process having an average energy of about 2 MeV to thermal neutrons with an average energy of about 0.025 EV that is electron volt 
which are in thermal equilibrium with the moderator. Now let us see about the neutron source in nuclear reactor. A source of neutron is required to initiate the fission reaction that is fission chain reaction for the first time. A mixture of beryllium with plutonium or radium or polonium is commonly used as a source of neutron. Now let us see about what is controlled rod. This controlled rod is a part of the nuclear reactor. So the controlled rods are used to control the chain reaction. They are very good absorber of neutrons. The commonly used control rods are made up of elements like boron or cadmium. Now let us see about cooling system. The cooling system removes the heat generated in the new reactor core. Ordinary water, heavy water and liquid sodium are the commonly used coolants. A good coolant must possess large specific heat capacity and high boiling point. The picture over here shows you the cooling system that is having the stream inside. So it's, it's getting cooling from the top of the fuel by core spray and uh, cooling from the bottom of the fuel by feed water. So it possesses a shroud inside and a reactor pressure vessel and a core sprayer wing header. Now let us see about the neutron reflector that is a part of a nuclear reactor. Neutron reflector prevents the leakage of neutrons to a large extent by reflecting them back. In pressurized heavy water reactor, the moderator itself acts as a reflector. Shielding A protection against the harmful radiation. The reactor is surrounded by a concrete wall of thickness about 2 to 2.5 meter. Thank you.